Hello and welcome to part five of my P5JS sound tutorial series. Now, in this particular video, I'm gonna look at adding sound effects to a P5 sketch. We looked at playing like a, a song in a P5JS sketch and starting and stopping it and, and manipulating it, but what happens if you have something like uh, a snake game? So this is a, uh, uh, an example I made in a previous video where you can play a snake game, meaning the, whoops, um, you move about the screen as this snake and you try to gather up food and as you gather up food, your snake becomes longer. Um, and now, so what would it mean to add sound effects to this particular sketch? So I have a few ideas. I made a list over here. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is just add two sound effects. So a sound effect for each time you eat the food and a sound effect for each time you have to start over when you run into yourself. Um, I also want to add some background music and I want to look at seeing what happens. Could we manipulate the background music having it speed up or slow down based on like how far you're getting in the game. And then also I, there's an issue that comes up with working with sound effects if you have a sound effect that you're triggering many times over and over again. Um, so I want to look at that and maybe we'll add a sound for changing direction. So I'm going to do all of that in this particular video. Now, where am I going to get my sounds from? So there's lots of places on the internet where you can find sounds. Um, this is a particular sound effects package. Um, I will link to this particular sound effects package. It has a Creative Commons license. It's available on GitHub. I've already downloaded it. It has wonderful sounds in it that were made um, for uh, this for the Coding Rainbow uh, channel specifically. So um, you can see here this nice page. I can just test out what some of these sounds sound like. For example, this is Coding Rainbow with me. <laughs> okay, so um, I already have all these sounds downloaded, and so what I'm going to do is go to the finder right here, and this is my this is my P5JS sketch. I have a libraries folder, and I have two JavaScript files and an index.html file. What I want to do, I think, is to is make a folder in here. Whoops, I'm in the wrong place. I want to make a folder called Sounds, and then I'm actually just going to take all of the sounds from that sound effects package. Um, and copy them into here. I'm not going to use all of them. So now you can see it with my project I have my JavaScript files, my HTML files, and now also this folder of sounds. And you can see um, like if I'm going to start with one of these alerts, you can see how they're named alert-04.mp3. So this is going to be really important because I'm going to need to reference the file name specifically when loading the sound. So let's just make sure first I can do that. So I'm using the, the there's a variety of different sound formats you can use which are supported by different browsers and I'm not going to get into that in this video. I'm just going to use mp3 files which will hopefully work in most scenarios. So let's say I want to try this. Uh, let's try alert number six. So the first thing I want to do is uh, go to my code and I want to create, um, let's make this the sound effect where you eat the food, eat sound. And I'm going to add the preload function. I think what I might like to do in a separate video is show you how if you have a lot of sounds, show you how to create a loading animation. Um, right now the, the, the um, it's just going to take a minute, for, uh, not a minute, but take a few seconds for the sketch to load. And I'm going to say eat sound equals load sound. And then now, this is the name of the sound file, but, but I also need the path, right? If that was just in the root directory, this would be enough. But I think I said sounds and then alerts. I think that's right. Let's go back and look. Uh, sounds and then alert, and it's with a capital A and with no S. So this type of stuff is typically case sensitive and you've got to get the spelling exactly right. So just to see if this works, I'm going to uh, go back to the sketch and I should be able to just say right here, eat sound.play. So that, that's working. So in the console, I have it as a global variable. I can just play that sound. So this is actually really easy stuff here. I've loaded the sound. All I need to do is now find the place in the code where I eat the food. So that actually happens right here in draw. There's a function, the snake function checks to see if it's eaten the food and then it calls this pick location which picks a new location for the food. And so I could just add here and say eat sound dot play. So now when I run this sketch, whoops, whoops, I have to click in it to, you can see, there we go. <laughs> it's working. All right, so that's the basic idea here. So now we need another sound effect. Let's, let's add a second sound effect. effect. Um, and let's pick one. Uh, let's, uh, 
for when you uh, for when you die. Uh, how about this one? <laughs> so I'm going to. This is under voice. So I'm going to uh, uh, say start over sound, and I'm going to load that one as well. And this one is in, uh, where was it? Sounds, voice, and then cartoon laugh. And now I should be able to say, okay, well, where in the code this function, s.death, that's what checks to see if the snake dies. Uh, and here, this is, where, this is where all the reset of the snake happens. You can see I'm logging to the console. So I can say here, uh, uh, what did I say? Start over sound.play. So now, I should be able to eat food. And eventually, I'm going to make myself So you can hear one, the trick I'm doing to, ah, this is a very, I'm not very good at playing this game. Uh, okay, so you can see that works. So this is the basic idea. All you need to do is load sound and call play at the opportune time. Um, now, actually, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another sound for change direction. So let's go back and pick which sound we want to do. Let's use, uh, I want a shorter sound. Uh, <laughs> these are all pretty. Hello. <laughs> hello. Well, let's say we wanted to use this hello. hello sound for every time I change direction. So I want to just emphasize a point here. So I'm going to, um, in the sketch, I'm going to say hello. And I'm going to say, uh, oops, hello equals load sound. And I forget, this one is in voice, hello01. Um, and I'm going to say it there. And so uh, sound slash voice. Now, I should, I should say that, you know, generally speaking, I would probably try to avoid spaces in your sound file names. It's all working just fine here. But sometimes file paths on different machines and different servers, spaces can confuse things. But it's going to work just fine. But I, if I were, you know, I might rename some of these files just to like this to make it easier to work with. But for right now, it's working, so I'm not going to worry about it. So let's say what, what I'm going to do now is anytime I press a key, I'm going to say hello.play. So you know, I could have a different sound for each direction. There's all sorts of, but I just want to like show you something that comes up a lot with sound effects. So I'm going to run this. So you can see with the way this is working, when I call play, it always restarts the sound immediately but does, and doesn't let it finish playing, which might be what you want. But if I wanted to make sure it's not, it doesn't play the, song, the sound until, um, until it finishes playing, if it always finishes playing the sound, um, I can say, I could say, if hello is, pl is not playing. So there's a function in the p5.js library called is playing, which returns true or false based on whether the sound is playing. So if I say, if it isn't already playing, then play the sound. Whoops, I missed something here, whoops. Now, what you can hello. see is, hello. it's actually kind of a long sound. Hello. So. So I can hit the keyboard as many times as I want, Hello. but it won't actually start the sound over again until it completely finishes. And there's a lot of silence there because the sound file itself has a nice long sort of fade out in it. Now, I, I wanted to mention something that I'm pretty sure is the case. And I'm going to look in the sound reference for a second. Um, and I think uh, what I want to look for is... Mm, there's something, pa time out. Back I was looking for, what I, I found what I was looking for, which is the play mode function. So actually I didn't realize it. Let's go back to the example and I want you to listen very carefully. I'm gonna press a key multiple times. 
it's a very short sound, so it's hard to hear, but it's actually always finishing playing hello and layering the sound over itself multiple times. This is actually what's known as the play mode uh, sustain. So sustain is the default play mode, meaning if you trigger a sound multiple times, it's going to layer over itself many times. But if you didn't want that, you could actually, um, you could actually change the play mode to restart. And I'll, you'll be able to hear the difference now. I'm going to refresh this page. So you can hear it doesn't, every time you press the key, it doesn't finish the previous sound. Which is perhaps not what I want here. It's a little bit awkward. Um, and perhaps that's not the best sound, so I'm going to take that out. Uh, but I wanted to demonstrate that this comes up a lot. You know, in, in my Flower Invaders code example, there's a thing where I'm, you hit the space bar and you launch water. So if you were hitting the space bar a lot, you might want to think about how you layer that sound. Um, okay, so I'm going to comment out this hello.play and let's look at what we have right now. So we have the game here and a sound is played every time you eat a piece of food. And then, by the way, I think I have a hack in here where I can just make it longer. So now also when you go into yourself, it laughs at you. So I can click the mouse. Actually, I want to make that the space bar. I just have a hack in here so that I, for testing, which just like increases. So I'm going to just say if key equals space bar, I think that'll be easier for me to do the testing. So. Um, so I can just really quickly like make a long snake and hear that sound. Okay. So now, what I want to do now is add some background music. So I have some nice, there is a, some music here. So music, music 01, MP3. So let's also load that. Uh, var music. And I'm going to say uh, music equals load, uh, I'm going to just copy this. Music equals load sound sounds, music and then music dash 01. And then what I want to do is say music.play as soon as the name starts. So now we've got our snake game, which I'm going to now play. <laughs> I forgot that I was making a tutorial video because I'm just interested in it. Oh, I could watch it over here too. Okay, so the point is now you see that I have background music playing. And you could, I could put a button here to toggle the background music, but I want to try something which is just to see, could I make the game faster with each piece of food you eat and then also have the music speed up? So, um, so what I'm, oh, I forgot that the, okay, so I'm going to mute this tab for a second. I should add a play pause button, but I'll, I'm, I'll do that later. Okay, so now what I want to do is, um, the, now the speed of this game, I, I've done it in a kind of a tricky way, which is that I've just actually controlled. Typically, this is a bad idea. The speed of this game is tied precisely to the frame rate. Because, you know, so uh, nothing could happen faster in the animation because the whole frame rate is. So I probably, if I needed to have other animations and things, would want to not mess with the frame rate. But this will work just fine and it'll demonstrate the idea. So one thing I want to do is make that a variable. So I'm going to make that a variable called frame rate. I'm going to start it pretty slow. I'm going to start it at three. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also put in draw the frame rate function. Uh, uh, and actually, you know what? I don't need to put it in draw. I'll put it in, uh, I'll, I'll do this more properly. I'll put it in setup. And then I'm going to adjust the frame rate every time the food is eaten. So I will call frame rate again in here. And I'll also say something like frame rate plus plus. So it's going to go, and just to be sure it's working, I'm going to change this by like 10 frames per second each for each piece of food right now. So it's slow. And then you can see it's really fast. So I don't want it to change that extreme. So I'm just going to change it by two. And then, now that I need to see that that's working, let's also say music dot rate, or was it, what was it? I forgot what the, I forgot what the function is. Let's go look in the reference. Um, so I want the uh, P5 reference uh, page for sound file. And you can see that the function is uh, rate. 
sets the playback rate of a sound file, will change the speed and the pitch, values less than zero, reverse the audio buffer. So I'm assuming, for example, if I say rate of two, it's gonna play it twice as fast. So what I think what I wanna do is I wanna say um, uh, music rate map the frame rate, which has a range from three, it started at three, to like maybe it's gonna go up to 20, I don't know, uh, to between one and three times as fast. So and then I'm gonna change the music rate to that music rate. So let's see how that works right now. So I'm gonna go back to the game and, oh, I need to unmute the tab. Oh, and by the way, when I start over, something I need to correct, when I start over, <laughs> I'm going crazy. I can't mute it really easily, I wish I could. I can, you know what I can do is I can at least refresh the page. So it's, when I start over, somewhere in here, um, I also need to say music.rate one, so that the music uh, goes back to one. And the other thing is that rate really picked up fast. So I'm gonna make the mapping much, much more, less extreme. And probably I don't need to do this as a mapping. Maybe what I should just do is uh, make a variable called music rate. This might make more sense. And have that equal to one. And then forget about doing a mapping. Just set the music rate and then just increase it by like a little bit, like 1% faster for each time a piece of food is eaten. So let's play this again, ready? Can you hear it getting faster? Okay, I'm, I'm terrible at this game. If anybody is actually just watch, watching YouTube make me bobbing my head awkwardly and like playing this game, I'm really impressed. Okay, you get the idea. That's, that's, that 0 0.01 was like very little. So, you know, I should probably make it at least like 0 0.05 for anything in, should happen. really what my life has become. <laughs> Rainbow snake game with music speeding up. Okay, you guys get the idea, okay? So this is the end of this video. I showed you how to load a bunch of sound effects, how to put music in the game, how to dance with the music, how to make it speed up. I think, I, I think I've got to everything on my list. I, don't, uh, I'm gonna, I, I feel like I need to like fade this out. I don't know how to fade the audio. I need to like build that into the code. But I'm just gonna mute the tab and say goodbye. And uh, we'll be making more sound. Uh, the next set of sound tutorials I'm gonna make are actually about sound synthesis. So I won't be loading any files at all. Um, and then I also wanna make one at some point, remind me if I haven't done this, if it's not on the channel, maybe one that shows if you have a ton of sounds, how to have like a loading bar or something like that um, as your program uh, starts up. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.